I'm looking at you. Hey man, what's going on? This is part, what is it? Part 12 of my guitar build. I got a couple of things I had to finish up with the heel and I've actually got to drill the holes in the tenon to connect it to the guitar. So I'm gonna do that here next. But I wanted to show you, you can see my guitar here and uh, this is the heel. So I don't know if you can see this, but let me zoom in on you. First of all, the shape of the heel is odd. It's like thicker here than over here. So it looks kind of odd, but you can see that hump really pretty good in the in the body right here. That's what I had to account for. That's why that looks like that. But like I mentioned earlier, it's got this gap in the middle. That's okay um, because there's going to be a heel cap that goes right there and it'll cover that gap up. I can't find the piece of ebony that I was planning on using. I hope I could find it. It's somewhere around here, but I got this piece of ebony in Rosewood just to do this example with. In order to relieve for this, the back of this tin and make it sit down flat, I had to chisel it out a little bit and I wasn't sure how much I was chiseling. Apparently more than I thought, so there's a gap. So, what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna drill the holes here that line up with these, and then I'm gonna drill those holes in the body and try to attach the neck. I'll take it off afterwards, but I just wanna get this part done. I hope I don't mess this up. Good grief, I cannot see. It's a little more difficult than I thought it would be. There. It's on there now. Pretty cool. What's next? I gotta extend this truss rod slot down into the body so that the truss rod can sit flat. So that's the next part. All right, let's try the truss rod, see if it fits. It's really tight, but it does fit. So I'll just need to kind of finesse the opening here. All right, it's on to the fretboard. Let's do it. And just a quick note before I jump to the fretboard, this side here, I've got it pretty flush. This side over here is just a smidge higher. It's almost like this, the, the neck is sitting like this a little bit. And I think I know why. It's another issue to do with the way that I built the sides when I was putting the sides together. I may talk about that later, because it's another issue uh, that I just didn't know any better. I didn't know what to look for, so which is good because I'm learning a lot. I think that by not knowing 100% of everything I'm supposed to do 100% of the time helps me to learn better because I uncover things like this and it's good lessons for me to, for the next guitar. So what I'll probably have to do, I watched a video on YouTube of a guy, Rose Creek, Rose Creek Guitars maybe? I don't remember the name of his uh, company, but he's got a YouTube channel. He was sanding this part right here to true this up. So I'm gonna have to true this up later uh, because of this section right here sticking up a little bit farther past the soundboard than this side. I'm gonna do that right before I attach the, the fretboard. I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I'm sure that once I shave this down a little bit, I may need to go back and lower the slot just a little bit for the truss rod. Right, I've gotta get this jig set up to cut the frets. In the video course that I'm taking, Robbie uh, uses a table saw. I've got the manual jig, so that's what I'm gonna use. I've never used it before though, so <laughs> there's some setup involved. Let me get this set up how it needs to be, and then I'll get back with you when I'm ready to cut the frets. There's an index pin that goes in here, and I just had it in my hands. I went to do something else, I came back and now I can't find it. Let me find it. Update, I just know, I just found it. Guess where it's at? But right there. All right, so I had to watch a YouTube video by Robbie on how to use this jig because he doesn't show how to use it in the course. Uh, so one of the comments, I just happened to read the comments and uh, I saw one comment and it just kind of triggered my memory just now how I read it. And it's a very useful tip. I'm trying to get set up, you know, and I got to put this little indexing pin in here. But when I look straight down here, I can't see the notches on the template. So it's hard to tell exactly where that notch is. 
and I don't know how I would see that trying to look through the little hole. So the guy in the comment said what he did was he took a pencil and just made a mark at each one of these index slots. So I just took my pencil and just made a mark above so I can see it. And that's going to help me when I go to put the index pen in. I can I now have an idea of where it's at. There. So I just thought that was a great tip. Just wanted to share it with you. All right, here we go. No turning back now. I've got it set up like I think it's supposed to be. As good as I can get it. So here we go. I'm going to get the first, first fret. I literally just got to go until the frame of this saw is resting on top of the bearings. You know, so that's what stops it from going any farther. I think I'm all the way down. Yeah. All right, so I guess that does it for the first one. Loosen this to the next one. Okay. I guess I need to make sure I'm not just grinding on this frame part of the saw. That'll make uh, two frets I've cut. So that means I got 18 more to go. So let me finish this. And when I get done, I'll catch up with you and show you what it looks like. just finished tapering the neck and then I planed it down to my line. So now I'm ready to do the binding. I just hit myself in the glasses. Why is it focusing down there? I think that before I bind it, I needed to make a decision about how the fretboard is going to end here at the hole. Um, in the video, Robbie doesn't bind the bottom of his fretboard, but I think I want to. So that means I can't bind it yet. I need to cut it like I want it down here and then work out the miters and stuff like that and then bind it. So I've got this five millimeter spacer that I made that'll represent the nut. And then I'll try to center this thing on here. All right, so let me bring you in and I'll show you what I'm looking at. All right, so you see, obviously, the fretboard is way too long. What I need to do is decide what to do. So I thought about maybe doing like a curve at the bottom, but that means I got to sort of bend one of these pieces and then miter as well. And I don't know if I'm advanced enough to do that. <laughs> so I may just cut it straight across and then bind the bottom of it like that. The binding is a little bit over two millimeters wide. So if I'm going to cut this, say I, let's say this right here where it intersects the hole, is going to represent the bottom of the binding. So I need to go up a couple of millimeters from there, make the same measurement on this side, and then that, and then I can cut it straight across. I think that's what I'm going to do. So where's my ruler? Update, it was in my back pocket, okay? <laughs> Keep mis misplacing stuff. So I'm going to lay that on the two millimeter mark at the hole. Honestly, I could probably just measure down the same distance from the last fret. So I need to cut right here. And just say no, I mean, I should have plenty of binding to try this with, all right? Because look, this is where the binding is going to go. You can see what it looks like. So I got all this back here of excess of each one left over. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then start working on the binding and see if I can get it right. Yeah, just an update for you too. Um, I had a few comments on my video where I messed the neck angle up and I had to fix it. I'm asking about the 14th fret and if, if I thought I moved it too much. Well, looky here. There's the 14th fret. And it's pretty much lined up right with the body. I mean, I mean, it's maybe a little bit higher than the body here, maybe a little bit lower than the body there, just because of that hump on the body. But I don't think you'll even be able to tell once the guitar's together. So I just noticed that, and that makes me, it makes me glad. Hey, check this out. I decided I was going to use my table saw to make that cut. And you know, it's it's not a square piece, so I'm trying to line up my mark I made here with like the edge of the zero clearance insert on my table saw. I'm lining up on the back and then with the front. I found out that if I take one of my cutoffs of Indian rosewood from the sides and put it about right there, it keeps this side off of the 
miter gauge and keeps it right about that angle. So I'm gonna make a cut here and then if I need to nudge it this way a little bit, I can cut off some more. So let me try that. Well, I guess I better plug my table saw in first. All right, I need to move it up just a tad bit. Still need to change it just a little bit. It cut it to the right angle that time. It just ate off my pencil line, which was still showing on this side, but it did take a tiny small chip off the corner. But the uh, binding is lower. It's not as high as this, plus it's gonna be getting radius. So it's gonna be, I'll be eating through that with my uh, sandpaper anyway. I probably should have wrapped some tape around it or something, but I'll know for next time. I don't know, let me see. Looks like I'll be covering up the top of the sound hole a good bit if I do that. Hmm. You know what, I wonder if I need to just, just whisper cut some more off of that. Hmm. I don't know, let me decide and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've been working for a little while on this and I think I finally got something that can work. I made this joint here. I'm not really sure how to do this. Maybe I put this piece on first, then put this one, and then put this one. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. All right, as you can see, I'm ready to go. I've already got some tape on the back ready to flip over. I think what I'm gonna do is put this one first, tape it, and then put this one on and tape it, and then work my way down. I think, I think that's what I'm gonna do right now. All right. Here we go. I want to continue adding tape here, and then uh, I'll catch back up with you when I'm done. Well, I'm glad to be done with this step. It wasn't as stressful as the guitar binding, to be sure, but uh, still trying to move pretty quick. My main issue was trying to keep the binding pressed all the way down, because uh, when I take the tape off, I'll have to flatten the back, or make sure that the uh, fretboard and the binding are flush together. I'm pretty, I'm pretty glad. I'm, kind of proud of myself that I was able to miter that end piece right here. I tried a couple of different ways. The first way, I just tried cutting at an angle. I marked it and cut with uh, the fretting saw and it was just rough. It wasn't straight. Then I tried to file it and it just looked bad. So I got a sharp chisel and I would just kind of use the mirror trick where you look in the back like a mirror and look at it 45 degrees or around thereabouts and cut down. The only hard part about that is cutting straight. I had to do it a few times so you can see here's all the, the tries I had. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <laughs> and seven is not 100% perfect, but I think with the tape pressing it together, it's gonna be pretty good. Anyway, um, tomorrow, I'm gonna leave this overnight to dry, and then tomorrow I'll work on the next step, like I said, flattening this, I'll cut these off, and then I'll be ready to, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure, uh, I guess I'll find out tomorrow. It's gonna take a while. Been a couple of days and I've got the back of the fretboard flat. I had to make the binding and the fretboard flush with each other. I also trimmed off those two pieces I had on the top sticking past. I went ahead and tried to center my uh, fretboard. And just to check, I measured for what I'm supposed to be right here at the bridge. And I'm about a millimeter and a half over where I need to be. I'll need to uh, thickness that fretboard a little bit from the back take off some more meat but before i do that i got one issue i gotta take care of let me take this back off so this needs to come down a little bit to match this plane what i'm going to do is take the sanding beam which is flat and i'm going to just lay that flat there and just start sanding until that's laying down but anyway i'm gonna do that for a little while and then i can move forward i should probably take this dang uh Trust rod right out of there. Look, I touched the top of it on this side. So what I could do is I could draw some pencil marks here. I guess I'll know I'm flat enough whenever those go away. All right, so what I've had to do is, <laughs> let me see, well, first of all, let me show you. Got the fretboard on top of the neck. We'll hold that down and check at the bridge. I'm right where I want to be. Like exactly, exactly at the measurement. I don't know if you remember from the last clip, I was like 11 and a half and I needed to be at 10. What I did was, when I took the uh, fretboard off and checked again, 
I don't remember if I said this or not, but I was at like four instead of three and a half right here. So I needed to go down at least a, a millimeter and a half. So what I did was I loosened the bolts on the neck and I did a few pulls, flossing pulls with sandpaper from the front on both sides, an even amount. And I got that neck angle to change by about half a millimeter. I don't know why it wasn't three and a half before. Maybe it has something to do with it's actually being bolted down. Maybe I was moving the neck somehow. I don't know. Then what I did was I took the uh, fretboard and I planed off the back of it. You can see all of my shavings here. About a millimeter. Alright, so I've been doing some research. What I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the neck off and I'm going to attach the fretboard. That'll put me knowing where I need to shave my neck down to. I'm not going to radius the fretboard yet. I'm just going to attach the fretboard, glue it down, and then shape my neck. Once I have that shaped, then I can do all the radiusing and all that stuff or whatever's next. And then when I go to put the neck back on, it'll be where it's supposed to be. Like I mentioned before, um, Robbie started building classical guitars. So he built, the way he learned was to shape the neck with neck attached to the body. Um, I don't really feel comfortable doing that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do it with the neck not attached. I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. So the next part. What I have here is a 1 16th inch drill bit. And what I did was I made a clamping call for the fretboard and I drilled some holes in it at the 12th fret and at the first fret so that I could put some pins locating pins in the fretboard and when I clamp this down they can remain in there I've got this lined up perfectly centered as much as I can get it I've got it clamped into place what I'm going to use as pins are these 1 16th inch drill bits that I have I had some brad nails but they're just a little bit too small I'd probably need a different gauge I'm nervous about this. I'm going to drill some holes here. Then I'm going to insert the pins. I'm going to take the fretboard off, remove the neck from the body, insert the truss rod, and then glue the fretboard down. I think I'm ready to go. I've walked through this in my head at least 10 times. So let's do this. I think I could do this. Yeah, it's on there. That's pretty awesome. Not too shabby. Where's my truss rod? Okay, one thing I may need to do, which I noticed, I think I'm gonna have to deepen that slot just a tad bit. I've got a little small router plane I'll do that real quick with. The cool thing about this little router plane is the blade is exactly a quarter inch wide. So it's the exact width of the, of the truss rod slot. Let's see if that's gonna be far enough down. Oh yeah, perfect. So let me finish out this whole slot and I'll be ready to go. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I've got all my clamps here. Got the fretboard here. Got my call here. The glue. Let's go ahead and do it. Right, I think that's gonna do it. I don't know if I'll be able to get any of that glue squeeze out up. Let me try to get some of it up anyway. And then I'm gonna wait overnight and then I'll take the clamps off tomorrow. Tell you what, I just wanted to get one of these little screwdrivers. But I found this has been really kind of nice. Look at this. Look at that. It's kind of nice. Yeah, this is like the best thing I've ever used for scraping glue. I wish I would have thought about this whenever I was putting the braces on. All right, it's the next morning. Let's go ahead and take these clamps off and see what it looks like. I don't know if I get these uh, drill bits out of there. Yeah, those things are stuck in there pretty bad. Maybe it's something I can pry with. There we go. So we should be able to have an idea of what the guitar is going to look like if I put this on the body. So let me do that. Back up a little bit. Here you go. I think it looks pretty cool. It's pretty awesome to see this. You can almost kind of make your brain not see this overhanging part, and you can just imagine what the neck looks like once it's uh, all the excess is removed a little bit. I'm really happy. It's come out really good. I'm really excited about the next part doing the uh, neck. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be fun. I think uh, I've got a Shinto rasp. I've got a spoke shave. Those are some things I had to pick up recently because I didn't have them. I'm looking forward to doing that part and I'm so glad that you stuck around all the way till this point if you've watched the whole series. Thank you so much. Thank you for the encouragement and thank you for the tips. Those of you who built guitars before, 
I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. This is a great thing. I'm really excited to move forward. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I got crazy eyes.